Good morning. Isn't it great to be here with other believers? Amen. 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 Yeah, yeah. Hey, um, uh, I'm glad to be back. I just want to thank Pastor Mason for bringing the word last week while I was gone. Thank you, Pastor Mason. Just, just appreciate you. I, I appreciate being in a church where there's such a a depth of leadership, and you know that, that it's not built on a, perp, on a person, that the ministry is built on Jesus Christ, and he has a whole body of people together, right? Amen. I praise God for that. Hey, I invite you to take your Bibles and turn to Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, and this is, we are concluding our sermon series uh, on the Sermon on the Mount, and we're going to talk about that, that time when the, when the Winds came down and the floods came up and the rain beat down on the house and it fell down. And I think this is a very appropriate weekend to talk about something like that. Um, I want you to know I'm not preaching on that because of Hurricane Hermine. I was not. I didn't decide to preach on that. This is just where it fell. I would planned weeks and weeks and weeks ago that this weekend I was going to preach on the winds coming down and the floods coming up and the houses being battered. And, and God's the one who provided the hurricane. Just good object lesson, right? I'm thinking next week I'm going to pray about what it would be like to get a million dollars. I think that would be awesome, don't you think? We'll see what God will do, right? Anyway, Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. And, and, and um, let's see what Jesus says about overcoming the flood. Overcoming the flood. Standing firm in the storm. Because we all need to stand firm in the storm. Would you please join me in standing as we look at God's word? And, and get the context of this. When Jesus says, everyone who hears these words of mine and does them, this is the end of the Sermon on the Mount. And he's talked about those that are, blessed are the peacemakers and blessed are the pure in heart. He's talking about forgiving people. He's talking about people not letting their anger uh, get a hold of them. He, he's, he's talking to people about the things of the heart and, and having a righteousness that's not just legalism. It's, it's a righteousness greater than the Pharisees. It's a righteousness that, that says it's the things of the heart that are so important. So when he says hearing and doing, he's not talking about legalism. He's talking about humility and dependence on God and forgiving one another and being open to one another and those kinds of things. Amen. <laughs> Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And when Jesus finished these sayings, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he was teaching them as one who had authority, not as their scribes. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for your word. Lord, I thank you that it just pours truth into our lives. Lord, a life-changing truth that points us straight toward you, the one who is the truth. And Lord Jesus, I pray that, that as we go over these passages, Lord, that, that you would impress upon us with the power of your Holy Spirit what things we need to do to get closer to you. And I pray this in your precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So this is the conclusion of the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, as we're going through this, realize that, that he's talked about a lot of things, and, and he ends with a series of contrasts. He contrasts the narrow gate that leads to eternal life with the wide gate and the broad way, the easy way that a lot of people take that leads to destruction. And he talks about good fruit versus bad fruit. And, and today what he's talking about that we're looking at, we're, we're looking at the two builders. And one of the builders is a foolish builder and the other builder is a wise builder. And, and one is building on sand. And I say this with a lot of humility knowing that the place where I work and the house where I live is on a sandbar. <laughs> on the same sandbar. And, uh, and then the wise one's one who builds on the solid rock. And before we talk about what's different among these two builders, let me tell you what's the same about both of them. 
Here's something that's the same about both of them. They both hear and they accept and acknowledge the words of Jesus. They both, they, that's what's common to it. Look at verse 24. It says, everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like the wise man. And then look at verse 26. It says, everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man. So both the wise man and the foolish man, they both hear the words of Jesus here. And when this says hearing the words of Jesus, it's not just talking about letting the sound waves come into the brain and they kind of register. This word here is a, is a word that, that has a deeper meaning. Jesus is talking about people that are actually acknowledging his words. Because you see this word for hearing, it's, it's the Greek word that we get acoustic from. It's akuo. And we get the word acoustic from it. Things that are coming from the ears. And this word appears over 400 times in the New Testament. This is a very, very, very common word. Hearing is so important to, to things of faith. And Jesus is talking to people. He's not talking about people that never even heard the gospel, those that aren't acknowledging him. He is talking to people that are gathered around him. They're gathered around him. He's, he's He's sharing these revolutionary thoughts on what it means to be a a child in the kingdom of heaven. And he says, you're all hearing this. And people that are standing there, some are going to follow him and some are not. But they're all hearing and accepting his words. And probably a lot of them are saying, amen, Rabbi Jesus. Amen, Rabbi Jesus. But some are going to go and they're going to hear and do. And some of them are going to hear and not do. But, But they're all hearing it. And they're all accepting it. You know, because uh, hearing means, means to acknowledge. Guys, you may not know this, but there are going to be a few football games on this afternoon uh, on the television. You may not know that. And, and I just want to warn you ahead of time. Your wives are going to pick that time to start a conversation with you. Okay? <laughs> right? Are you pretty sure that, that, that somewhere in there that, that your wife will want to talk to you about something? And when she talks to you, there's going to be a choice that you're going to have to make. Okay? And so when your wife comes to you, she wants to have a conversation, the football game is on, you're going to do something very instinctively. You know what you're going to do? You're going to pick up your remote control. Okay? And you're going to have to make an adjustment because, you know, you can't hear both of them at the same time, right? Right? So what you're going to do is you're going to turn the volume up so you can hear the TV better, right? Well, ladies... When you, when you talk to your man, it's during a football game, and he's peering at that TV, and you're going to talk to him, and you want to have that conversation. You want him to at least hear what you're going to say, and, and he's looking, and you talk to him, and he goes, uh-huh, uh-huh, I hear you, baby. I hear you, baby. Do you think he's heard you? No. Why not? Because hearing means acknowledging right? It hasn't been heard if it hasn't been acknowledged. And you know, that's the first step. That's the first thing I want to share with you today, is that if you're going to, if you're going to stand on that storm, you got to acknowledge Jesus Christ, the rock. You got to hear the words, both the wise man and the foolish man. They both heard the words, but the wise man, he heard the word too, right? And that meant that he heard it and he, and he acknowledged it. That's the first step to standing firm in the storm. It's the first step, understanding and accepting the gospel, understanding that there's a gospel message, understanding that Jesus came for a purpose. He came to give you abundant life, understanding and hearing and acknowledging that Jesus Christ is the one who gives you the joy that overcomes everything the world has to give to you, understanding that Jesus Christ is the one who's bringing the peace that passes all understanding when it doesn't make sense to have peace anymore. You gotta, you gotta hear those words, and you gotta accept those words, and you gotta acknowledge those words. That's the first step of faith. The Apostle Paul told us in Romans chapter 10, he says, Faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. So hearing is very important. And Jesus is talking to people who are who are hearing that, both the wise builder and the foolish builder. They started with hearing. You know, I, I just believe that, that there are people with different levels of commitment, but most of you are here for a purpose. You are here You are here because you want your faith to be stronger. You are here because you're thinking that Christ in your life is better than, than Christ not in your life. 
and you're hearing the gospel, you're agreeing with the gospel, you're acknowledging the gospel. And I honestly believe that most people don't build their lives, and that's what the house stands for, it stands for your life. Most people don't, don't live their life with the intention of letting it crumble around them. I don't think anybody has a person say, I want to live a life so that I can, just, I can just go hit rock bottom. No one does that. People want to build lives that stand up to the storms of life. That's what we all want to do. The first step is hearing the gospel message, hearing what Jesus has to offer. That's the first step. And, and notice that, you notice that, that both of these houses, they're, they're relatively the same kind of house, okay? It doesn't say that they're two different kinds of houses, that the wise men built a big house and the, and the foolish person built a small house or vice versa, or the, or the wise man built one out of, out of concrete block and the other one built it out of stick, or, or one had a, a coastal uh, exterior and the other had a Mediterranean exterior, you know, all this kind of stuff. No. They were building a house and both of them were building houses that they thought would stand. Most of you are building lives because you want that life to be successful and I think you're here in church because you want that life to be successful in the Lord am I right Amen. that's what you want and some of you are going to be more successful and some of you are wiser in it than others but you started right you're hearing you're hearing the word of God but let me just tell you hearing is not enough hearing is not enough see here's something here's something that made them different Verse 24, everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man. Hearing and understanding, even acknowledging it's not enough. The wise man incorporates that hearing and that acknowledging into everything he does. And remember, we're not talking about just legal, legalistic sort of movements. We're talking about the things of the heart here. Not letting my anger overtake me. Not, not letting, uh, not letting uh, unforgiveness fester in my life. Not, not letting spiritual pride well up. These are the things. And then he says in verse 26, Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them, he'll be like the foolish man. And you know, we, this word to do, it, it can be very confusing. Because we think, but that means these are some actions that have to take place. Well, in the context of the Sermon on the Mount, these are heart attitudes. And this word to do, it says we need to make it happen. We need to make humility happen in our lives. We need to let, we need to let uh, acceptance happen in our lives. We need to let anger go away in our lives. We need, to, we need to let Jesus Christ peer into our heart. We need to let those kinds of things happen so he can be so revolutionary in our lives, just like he has been in the world. It means to commit to the plan. You know, it's, it's like people who say they follow Christ, but they let unforgiveness just fester in their lives. You know, people who might go to church, they're going to talk the talk, they're going to pack the pew, but that's it. I want you to know hearing is not enough. You can't just talk the words of forgiveness. You actually got to forgive people. That, that's hearing it and acknowledging. It's just the first step. It's the first step, but it has to be followed by a second step and a third step and a, and a fourth step and, and a fifth step. That's commitment. That's commitment. You know, when you, when you go before the Lord day by day and you humbly ask the Lord to show you those things that need to be adjusted in your life and you, you go to him for dependence every day and you look at others uh, as greater than yourselves with that self-sacrificing love, that takes commitment and that takes perseverance. That's what he's talking about hearing and doing the words that he's talking about here. See, it's not enough just to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the rock. We've got to build our lives on Jesus Christ, the rock. And that's what he's talking about. He's the foundation. He's the foundation. You know, I, um, I was at a breakfast meeting with the superintendent of our schools this past week, Dr. Joyner, and uh, I appreciate Pastor Bobby and our congregation helped to facilitate that. We had area principals together and then, and then area pastors together, and, and what Dr. Joyner was trying to do was trying to connect churches and schools together because he thinks that churches and schools working together are better for everyone, right? Amen. Amen. Yeah. So, and he was trying to encourage some church partnership, and, and he did admit our superintendent did admit that, that uh, although he appreciated the faith committed, commi uh, community, he admitted that there is a segment of our population that when the church gets active in the schools, they just get very annoyed. I mean, there are some people, they just really do not like it when that happens. 
Okay, <laughs> that's right, praise God. But Dr. Joyner said that doesn't matter. He encouraged churches to get with the schools, and he encouraged the principals there. You need to work with the churches around you because they can make a difference in your schools and need to facilitate that. And he said, this is in the best interest of students, and this is appropriate, and it is within the law. And so I just appreciate his words there in front of everybody. Yeah. Now that's a sidebar because I, I want to say at that breakfast... I also had a meeting with, uh, with one of our pastors in town. His name's Smiley Sturgis. He's a pastor of Good News Church in town. We had a good conversation there briefly. And he mentioned something to me that just resonated. I asked how things are going. He said, things are going pretty well, except you know what I've noticed? I've noticed that when I first started the ministry in St. August, Augustine, the lost people that came to me, the people that weren't following Jesus Christ as Lord, those people have it more together than some of the people inside my church today. He said, years ago, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, that people who didn't even know the Lord had it more together. Things were working together in their families. Their families were more stable than many of the Christians in church today. And I have to say, that's true for our church as well. There are people who are, who are living lives of, of instability. You know, do you realize that 50% of children born today, they don't have a mother or father who are committed to each other in marriage. That's a lot. That's, that says a lot about family. You know, there are Christian homes, Christian homes that are seeking the abundant life through Visa and MasterCard, right? Rather than in Jesus Christ and paying the consequences. There are Christian brothers and sisters in Christ who haven't spoken to their physical family members in years and they will not. They refuse to. Yeah. There are believers who shout the name of Jesus real loud here in this room, but you get outside this room, they get incredibly silent. Let me tell you, what's the difference? It's perseverance. I think it's a lack of commitment. It's hearing but not doing what we've heard. It's not building on the foundation. And this is foolish because when we, when we say just these externals that we do or, or or just the acknowledgments that we make in a worship room, that that's going to bring us the abundant life in Christ, that's like the foolish builder. That's like the foolish builder being a doer of the word and being a hearer of the word and not a doer. And it's deceptive to you. You know, James says it this way. He said, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. You see, when we can get caught up into that and thinking that we're doing some right things on externally and thinking we got everything all right, but hearing without doing, if you go on into that James passage, it's, it's forgetful, it's neglectful, it's living the lie, living the lie so much that we believe the lie and we're deceiving ourselves. See, it's hearing and doing. That's the path to blessing. We can't just acknowledge Christ the rock. We've got to build on Christ the rock. And that's what he's saying here. Now, there's something else that these builders have in common. It's something that all of us have in common. And uh, this is coming back to verse 25. And the rain fell and the floods came. Verse 27, with the foolish builder in his house, and the rain fell and the floods came. Here's something that both of them have in common. The flood's going to come. And this flood represents the judgment day. This represents that 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 apocryphal, not apocryphal, the, uh, I can't, eschatological, that's a big end of the world sort of term, day of the Lord, the big day of the Lord. And uh, in the, the judgment day is coming. And here's something that all of us have in common here. We have differences in our lives, different number of people in our family, different responsibilities in the kingdom, different spiritual gifts. But one thing we have in common, the judgment day is coming. There's going to be a day when you and I stand before the Lord on judgment day, before the judgment throne. And we have to give an accounting of our life. And you say, how do you build your life? What's the foundation of your life? And that's what this is saying. That's the flood. And the foundation matters because the flood is coming. You can write that down. The foundation matters because the flood is coming. Judgment day is coming. And we can be prepared for all kinds of things externally. You can be prepared for a storm. You can gather the water. You can gather the food. You can secure your windows. You can put some cash away. And you can be ready for the storm. But unless you are eternally prepared and you're doing the work in your heart 
persevering, trying to follow Jesus Christ with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, you are not prepared for the eternal judgment. And the way you're prepared, and the way I'm prepared, is by building on the foundation of Jesus Christ, depending on him. That's how we're prepared. That's how we're prepared. The foundation matters. And you know, Jesus Christ, he's the foundation. He is the foundation. And what's so special about him is he's the foundation that God laid down. He's the foundation that God laid down. The prophet Isaiah said this in Isaiah 28. He said, therefore, thus says the Lord God, behold, I am the one who's laid as a foundation in Zion, a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone of a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not be in haste. This is the foundation. That foundation that God gave to us so that we can stand on that day and the externals may not measure up and and we're not going to be perfect. None of us will be, but we're going to be standing on the foundation and Jesus Christ will see us through to eternity. That's the foundation. That's how I'm prepared, staying clean and close to him. This is the foundation and he's the only foundation. There are not multiple foundations. Paul wrote this in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. He talked about foundations as he's building churches. And he said, not church buildings, church congregations. And he said, according to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation. And someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, he's the only foundation. He's the only one that's going to get us into eternity. He's the only one that has the power and the ability to to bring us into that eternal life relationship. There are a lot of things that are going to change. Everything shifts. Everything shifts in this life. Cultural opinions shift. If you're building a foundation and and you're determining how you're going to feel and how you're going to react and what's right or wrong based on cultural opinion, let me tell you, cultural opinion changes. It has changed dramatically in my lifetime here on earth. It changes. That can't be your foundation. Your fitness and health, eventually it's going to decline and that feed, they're just going to go out from underneath you. That doesn't last. Your money Whatever you got, you're not taking with you, right? In case you didn't know that, I'm here to tell you. But let me tell you something you will take into eternity. Your relationship with Jesus Christ. And the relationship is this. You trust him for the forgiveness of your sins. You trust him that he's going to pay the penalty for your sins. You follow him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And he'll take you to eternity. You just want to stay close to him and he'll carry you up to eternity. That's the relationship. And that relationship will last all the way to heaven. And you can bank on that. He's the foundation. So you want to build on that rock. That foundation matters because there's a flood coming. It's a judgment day floods coming. And you want to be ready for that. Another reason the flood's important. uh, The foundation is important. Another reason the foundation is important is that you're not building alone. And... Wherever you build, other people are going to build after you, okay? So you build in a bad place, there are going to be other people that are following your example, right? See, we're building together. We're building together. So I want to be on the foundation so more people will be building together with me on the foundation. This is Ephesians chapter 2. Paul wrote this. I just love this. He says, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens, fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. Jesus is that foundation. He's the cornerstone of the foundation and the, and the prophets and the apostles built on it. And, and there are people before us that have built on that foundation. There are people that are going to come after us that are going to build on that foundation. And right now there are people with us that we're building together. I want to be on that foundation so that people that are building with me They're going to be on the foundation, too. We're going to keep each other together. That's the importance of of church. That's the importance of community of faith. That's the importance of being in a life group where you can talk about issues and and figure out how to deal with your emotions and reactions together. That's why it's just so important. The foundation matters because it's not just me. It's all of us. Because there's a flood that's coming. And the foundation, not only does it keep us safe through the flood... It connects us together to bring as many as we can 
uh, into heaven. So that, that, that's what's there. And it's only then that we can live secure and certain that we can stand. So the big question is, not what kind of house you're building or, or what it's made out of or what it's going to look like as far as your life. But what's your foundation? What determines how you react? What determines uh, how you're going to respond? What determines your philosophy of life? The difference between the two houses was the rock. It was the rock. Look at verse 25. The rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. Let me tell you, Jesus Christ is the rock. He's the foundation, and you can be founded on him as well. Your life can be established on him as well. He offers you that foundation in your life. And I believe if you receive him as the foundation of your life, that foundation first in his gospel, that he's going to take away the eternal consequences of your sin. He's going to bring forgiveness. He's going to bring you into heaven. That is the foundation. And if he's not the rock of your life, he can be. He can be. What are you trusting in? What are you trusting in? If it's not Jesus... If it's not Jesus, I pray that the Holy Spirit will tell you the direction that needs to be made. Because Jesus is the only way that's going to take you through the flood. He'll bring you life. He'll bring you abundant life. He'll bring you eternal life. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus. Hi, my name is Walter West, lead pastor of Anastasia Baptist Church. Thank you for joining us for this latest edition of Real Life, Real Hope. You know, in this message, we talked about hearing and doing. It's, it's one thing to hear the gospel message. It's another thing to put it into practice. And putting it into practice, it's step by step, persevering, day by day, month by month, year by year. And the best way to do that is in community with other believers who are helping you uh, to take each step of faith. You know, if you don't have a church home, I just invite you to consider finding one around you, a church that believes in the Bible where there are people that can encourage you in your faith. Now, if you don't have one, I invite you to contact us. You can find Anastasia Baptist Church online. We're, we're found at www.anastasiachurch.org. Or you can call us on, on the telephone. It's area code 904-471-2166. Or, or better yet, come by and see us personally. You can find Anastasia Baptist Church locally in the St. Augustine, Florida area. We're trying to help people not only hear the life-changing message of Jesus Christ, but to embrace that message. I pray that you're one of those. Until next time, God bless you.